Hey there, friendlies. How's up? Welcome to the 9th of April episode of my fantabulous live stream. Live stream. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm having some wicked trouble with the, uh, <clears throat> the coughing and the hacking today, but that's okay. We're just going to get through this, okay? Um, so, as I always like to say to start this thing off, Welcome to the BBNB live stream where we got some beverages, we got some blades, and we're going to talk about some bushcraft. In fact, tonight we're actually going to talk about a bushcraft-related subject. Um, <clears throat> to it, we're going to be talking about uh, needs versus wants in, in the outdoors, whether you're paddling, you're bushcrafting, you're just basic camping, you're car camping, you're out... Uh, you're off-gridding, off-gridding, you're living the off-grid lifestyle, you're homesteading, any of those things. Um, <clears throat> because there's being safe in the outdoors, there's being well-equipped, and then there's buying the toys. And bushcrafters, you guys may not have re realized through all the bushcrafty videos, but bushcrafters do indeed like the toys but before we talk about that <clears throat> i do want to do the usual um housekeeping which is the part where i say if you're listening to this live stream time shifted to tomorrow or next week or next month or next year or next lifetime thank you for listening thank you for watching thank you for the comments i see up here down below the doobly-doo on occasion um it warms the cockles of my heart to know that you're watching this stuff after the fact even though you cannot participate in the side chat Excuse me. If at any point tonight, by the way, you really love what's happening here, then I invite you to throw me a smiley thumb. If at any point tonight you really kind of hate what's going on, that's okay. The frowny thumb, there we go. It's on camera, works just as well. And if you'd like to take a more active role in supporting the channel and keeping the lights on around here, then I invite you to investigate the memberships. Hit the join button. There you will see that there are two tiers of membership as well as information on which on what each tier gets you for your hard-earned money. <clears throat> One thing that you do get for both tiers is my never-ending gratitude. Um, so before we get on to tonight's uh, subject, I'm just going to see who's hanging with us in the side chat. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Sorry. And uh, throw out a couple of hellos. All right? So. Mm. Water, nectar of the gods. David Evans, is, he popped in as number one at 824. David Evans has two icons next to his name. That's because he is not only a channel hero, but he is a channel mod. So as I always say, be polite, or he going to drop the hammer on your ass. Right after that, at 8.34, exactly 10 minutes later, Canadian popped in with a couple of smileys and a couple of hands, waving, being cool, dropping me a thumbs up right off the bat. Thank you, Mr. Canadian. Canadian, by the way, is also a channel hero right now. Thanks to, uh, you know, the monies and uh, as you can see by the icon next to his name uh mal popped in briefly to say to have a good stream uh we have marcus popping in as well at 8 58 almost at showtime telling david that he is number one but are we talking about temporally or are we talking about he's always number one in our hearts marcus really let's be honest here uh canadian Popping in again with uh, he's sword fighting. He's got a knife. He's got, oh, I think I know what he's talking about. <clears throat> he's talking about needs versus wants. Um, there we go. We got Destiny in the house. Destiny right now is also a channel hero, as you can tell by that beautiful icon next to her name. Uh, apparently, I was asleep. I don't remember when. But Marcus said that at 9. Um, let's just skip down. Destiny is asking Marcus how the pups are, and he says that they're growing fast. They definitely do that. Pups do. Uh, Kristen, who is also a channel hero, is saying hi to everyone. How's, how's by you, Kristen? How's it going tonight? <clears throat> um, I'm just trying to catch up with who is saying, who is, ah, uh, oh, there we go. Steve Grounds also in the house. How's it going, Steve? I like seeing that little membership logo next to your name as well. Makes me feel like we're all one big happy family here. Or an unhappy family. I don't know what family is to you guys. You know what I'm saying? Um, hold on a second here. 
Mark is asking what tonight's beverages are. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I have a whiskey for if Al doesn't hang with us, which is going to be this. Hold on a second. This beautiful, beautiful whiskey right here. Just delicious. It's a blend. Um, you guys who know me well, know what, what are you doing with a blend? Well, I mean, you know, uh, Al um, is the reason I have several blends, right? The uh, Johnny Walker Blue and the King George, those are both blends. Um, <clears throat> this, there's a hundred different whiskeys in here. It's it's engineered as hell as most Japanese whiskey is. It is colored. It is chill filtered. Um, but it's at a, a really nice uh, alcohol by volume of 51.4%. Um, and it's just beautiful. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, so that's if Al isn't hanging with us. <clears throat> if he is, then I've got blue in, on, the, uh, on the floor over there. I believe I bottled this down. Yeah, that's finished. That is finished. Oop. That was a fantabulous bottle, too. It was as expensive as hell. There we go. <clears throat> so that's what we got tonight. Um, I, before then, I have tea and I have water because I just I didn't have time to run and get beer this week. So anyway, um, uh, Destiny I was really looking forward to tonight's live because she had a crap day. I also had a crap day, so I am uh, letting it all hang out here on the uh, the stream of lives. Um. So Destiny likes the jiving with the drumming. Hey, we got Ian the Web Lord popping in. Just as it's popping off around here. How's it going, Ian? How are you doing? I like seeing that uh, membership icon next to your name. Um, boom, boom. Just popping down. Everyone's just saying saying hi. Sales just popping in with the hello. Sales is a channel uh, mod. So much like with David, if you're not polite, he may drop the hammer on you. Sales, I'm assuming you're not going to be with us the whole night, considering what time you work in the morning. <clears throat> but nice to see you popping in anyway. We got Peanut Trucker in the house. Peanut Trucker is also a channel. How did I get so many mods? These mods are all fine people, though, so I don't. I have no regrets. But, as I always say, be polite. Don't be political. Don't talk about pew-pews, and you won't get banned. Or hammered. Not banned. We're not going to ban anyone. Unless they really deserve it. Um, Destiny says, So I understand from Kristen that there's a great quotable quote from the last live, something about the drapes and rugs. Oh, what was the context? Yeah, I did say that. And I wouldn't have even noticed it if she hadn't uh, twigged to it. <clears throat> I don't remember what the context was for that. You know what? Um... Chris, um, so a question popped into my head on the way on my drive home to my massively long drive home tonight. There was a semi truck booting down the the um, the street, the highway, and in the wheels it had like these long tags, but they were it looked like they were stuck onto one of the the lug nuts or something, and just sort of like this, you know, and going. Do I have a piece of paper here that I can just sort of show you what I'm talking about? Just going to sketch it out for you. <clears throat> so if this is kind of like a... I'll show you in a second. I'm just going to sketch it down. <clears throat> so this is the way I would see the wheel coming up around the side. I don't know if this is even remotely <clears throat> right. So here's your wheel. It's like these yellow tabs. Like they, I don't know if they were plastic or what, but they were stuck on and sort of sticking out. And, you know, I was just wondering what the heck they are because I sometimes see them on trucks, but and I, and I, I never know what they are. <clears throat> like are they inspection tags or something? Like the, the tires were inspected? That's all I can think of. Oh, come on. Sinuses. 
Russell's popping in, saying that he got caught up watching an old episode of Charlie's Angels. So what was your favorite angel? Um, everyone's just saying hi. Hey, there's Carol. Carol is also a channel hero. And by the way, Russell is not only a channel hero, but he's also a channel mod. So be nice and you won't get the hammer dropped. I've got many, many mods here. This is like, ain't no one getting away with anything. <clears throat> um, Destiny is saying thank you to Serge for the information he uh, disseminated on. He was on the, that live, that recent live. Uh, Russell got the notification after the fact. Yeah, that's weird. I, there's a lot of stuff about YouTube that doesn't really work properly. <clears throat> Raspberry Rock says that David Evans is the Seminole chatter. I think you're talking about uh, not the same thing as Seminole. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for correcting yourself in the funniest way possible. Uh, okay, so you're still there till April 15th, so that's uh, another week or so. Hey, look who's here. We got Honeybee in the house. Honeybee also a channel mod. It's man, there's a lot of mods here tonight, so I'm feeling all like safe. Christy, I do have a beer fridge down here. It's in the it's in the other room. Sorry. It it's weird because I'm mirrored, but yeah, it's in the other room. <clears throat> Grace in the house, how's it going? Destiny's asking, please repeat tonight's topic. Tonight's top yeah. Hey, start again. Tonight's topic is needs versus wants in the outdoors. Um, camping, bushcrafting, paddling, off-grading, homesteading, hiking, stuff. So that's what we're going to talk about. I'm just trying to, uh, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of the. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anyone who's popped in and said hello. <clears throat> uh, David said, I saw a sign mark once where someone took the D of drapes and added it to the front of rugs. Yikes. Okay, I get it. Russell Jacqueline Smith was always my favorite angel by far. <clears throat> um, so, <clears throat> these versus wants. Uh, you know, I was thinking about this because... When you're, I'm trying to figure out how to say this <clears throat> without coming across as either really bougie or really bitchy. <clears throat> you know how when you go, when you're about to go canoe camping or car camping or camping or whatever, you're, you're, you're packing for a trip. You're packing your stuff. And I don't know about you guys, but when I'm packing my stuff, you know, <clears throat> it, it's a time for me to like, which knife do I bring kind of thing? And like any old knife is good, but some of the knives you just feel a pull towards or some axes or some stuff. Um, <clears throat> and I have this thing that I've said to you guys before that it, I like buying stuff that gives me the fizz because it means that I'm going to pick that. I'm going to use that. It's not going to sit in the corner and just, gather dust this is very true of bass guitars you, you've seen both of my basses <clears throat> they both give, give me the fizz for differing reasons and they're the only two that i have left out of i don't know how many i had at my peak like five or six or something <clears throat> but like for the outdoors you need a cutting tool but i want an axe right like but if you bring an axe, then by definition, you're kind of bringing two cutting tools because you also need a knife. And even on that, right, what you need is a knife, right? You need a sharp knife. It's a cutting tool. What you don't necessarily need, but you want, is a custom knife by a, by a you know, by a small outfit or by one guy, Right. This is my first serious bushcraft knife. It's not focusing on that at all. There we go. Okay. Um, 
do I need the Australian custom job over a Mora? No, of course you don't. Of course you don't. Does this give me more functionality in alignment with how much more this costs than this? No, but you can baton with this, and this is a rat tail tang, right? This this is the uh, the Mora Kneve Robust. I mean, and it's robust compared to Mora Kneve, right? It's not robust compared to like a Jack Lore or a FL Kneven F1 or something like that. <clears throat> you need a knife. I have Moras. I have expensive Moras. FL Kneven F1. I got this Victoria Knox that you guys will see on video very soon. Even for an axe, right? Any old axe will do. I mean, this is a Swedish axe, but any old axe will do. But I'm being careful with the axes because there's a lot of fragile stuff around here. But like, come on, right? Woodcraft by Council Tool, two hundred dollar axe. I can tell you, I need this axe all day long. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> a lot of bush was crafted with, you know, an old axe like this before boutique axe makers came along. <clears throat> a lot of, a lot of bush was crafted. With knives that, in, by today's standard, would be considered kind of plain Jane. Um, you know, <clears throat> I'm thinking of the uh, the Groman uh, that I have in, in a box over there. In fact, cutting tools. Um, <clears throat> right. Would you consider this to be a, a high-end knife in today's in today's market? Hell no. No way. I mean, it's still over a hundred bucks, but plain rosewood handle. Sorry, it's it's very oily um, because it's the uh, it's the carbon steel. I have it well oiled. Um, but there's nothing fancy on this thing. Come on, focus. There we go. There's nothing fancy on it, right? Very plain rosewood, plain pins. It's not a very fancy steel. It's not a bad steel by any stretch, but, you know, you look at books, you know, you got Nesmuk and you got Kephart. These guys had knives made for them, but we're talking like, you know, this was a $7 knife. Still expensive back when these guys were writing, but not like Jacklor expensive, right? Not... Woodlar expensive, not adventure sworn expensive. They were kind of Groman expensive. <clears throat> you know, custom knives, but still kind of proletarian in price and 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 appointments. And these guys used their knives, crafted much bush. Right? But I like stuff that gives me the fizz. And I know I'm not alone in that. And it's the same thing, you know, like, y you just need a basic saw, right? And I have a basic saw right here. Um, a longer one would be ideal. This one is definitely too short for a lot of the stuff I do. <clears throat> and so for that, I have some buck saws. And do I need three buck saws? No. Um, I would do just fine with my Agawa gear or what used to be called Agawa Canyon. Uh, very simple to deploy. Aluminium saw. <clears throat> um, it ain't pretty. It just looks that way. But it works fine. But I have a thing for handmade wooden buck saws. And the this, this conversation... Um, hold on a second. 
Uh, I'm just sort of taking a look at at the side chat to make sure I don't ignore you guys. Start just blah, 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 and, and start ignoring you guys. Lots of Cheryl Ladd fans. Legit choice. Uh, Destiny dropping a quotable quote that wasn't by Jesse. If Jess were a Spice Girl, he'd be Boreal Spice. I like that. In fact, I may sign all of my my letters, Boreal Spice, from now on. Um, what David says, or maybe Pine Tar Spice. Yikes. Um, I'm just taking a look here. Country boy is dealing with computer problems, as usual on Tuesdays, kind of watching on my phone. That's all right. <clears throat> I mean, it's not all right that you have computer problems. I mean, it's just it's good. It's just good to see you here. Country boy, by the way, is a channel hero and a channel mod. Um, just sort of, hey, there is Mark Jones. Late to the show, but hi to all. That's fine. I mean, you're not that late, and it's not like you have to be here on time anyway. I'm just glad to see you guys uh, popping in. Um, Mark says, see, this is good because um, people are starting to uh, to engage with the subject here. The most important thing is to get out there and use the tools in the pack. Dreaming is great, but it isn't going to get anything done. Absolutely. Honeybee says, I do like when my things give me the fizz, but I tend to only keep one or two really quality items. Really as an effort to keep it about the bushcraft. Maybe it's a taste thing. Um, <clears throat> you definitely have taste. I've seen some of your, your stuff on screen. Um, what I have here is as many knives as I hope I'm, I'm ever going to have. In fact, I'd like to sort of reduce that a bit by maybe passing knives onto my daughters as they become more um, outdoorsy, if they become more outdoorsy. Um, <clears throat> maybe sell one or two on at some point. Um, like this one I bought to do the, the uh, to do an episode on, you know. Will I keep it long term? I don't know. It's a pretty nice knife, but I've got some pretty nice knives. But I don't want to talk about this because I just shot a review of it. Come on, fool. There we go. Swiss made. So I don't know. And I, I kind of like where you're going because it, it does it does go right into the <clears throat> You need a cutting tool. In fact, you need, if you're going to have knives, you need two knives in your pack. You need the one that you use, the one that's going to be on your belt, and you need a backup just in case something happens to that. That's where, like, a Mora knife pops in, right? This one is always in the pack as my backup, just in case one of these beautiful things disappears or gets broken or whatever. Um, I'm okay just having this in the pack rather than using it all the time because it was, what, $19 Canadian when I bought this. They're more than that now, but right. <clears throat> so it's like throw it in the pack and forget it there. Take it out after every trip to, to clean an oil, unless you have the, um, the stainless one, but that's just a backup, right? I will usually have something much, much nicer on my belt that I like getting out. I like, you know, when I use it, you know, when I'm cleaning it up, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to look at it a little, you know, I'm going to take a look at how the, um, fool, it's because it keeps, I'm trying to show you guys stuff here, right? Like I love seeing how these things are starting to get used, even though I care for them. You know, you will never think this is a brand new knife, but I care for it. And, you know, when I'm using it and I'm then I'm cleaning it up after using it, I sort of like to look at it a bit because somebody designed this, right? Like somebody came up with every element of this design. I would like to talk to them about how far forward this lanyard hole is, though. I would put that about there because I do feel that it sits right at the wrong spot for me. Well, actually, when I'm really choked up to where you're supposed to be on these, come on, fool. Then it's, it's not so bad. But, yeah, I just feel that it should be back by about three millimeters. But I really get the fizz from, you know, popping a really nice tool out of a sheath and getting to work with it. but that doesn't mean you need really nice tools to get the job done. You know, 
Um, so, David, uh, Peanut Trucker popped me the answer to my question in Messenger. <clears throat> I will take a look. Um, uh, do you need a knife and or axe to go camping? I think you need a cutting tool. I think you absolutely need something. I don't necessarily think that most people need both, especially if like your idea of a knife is more like a five or six inch blade, right? Once you get up to five, six, you know, the bigger choppers can really stand in for, for axes in a lot of cases. Oh, so peanut trucker says that those things are mainly used up north which would be here in the winter to make sure your brakes are not frozen and the wheel is spinning and since these are exactly what i was asking i'm just going to show the picture um, i'm not going to show your your actual text yeah that's them well that is good to know i, I was like maybe they're anyway uh but yeah david i think you need something i absolutely think you need something yes yeah, you know, it's not only for, like, I wonder, do you only need a saw? Like, I'm asking that to you guys. Like, <clears throat> here's the question. You know, and I'm, I'm even going to make this a poll, but I want to, I want to hear you go, hear you guys answer. If you had one cutting tool to go with you to the campsite, would you rather an axe, a saw, or a knife? <clears throat> And why? Why would you take that? There we go. Start the poll. I'll leave it up for about 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, yes, I did read that out. I'm just keeping you. Country boy is about to beat up on his laptop. Hello to all that said hello to me. I don't know how to do this on my phone. Um, I, I have a very hard time uh, answering people, like adding people on my phone. I almost never do it. Uh, if ever I, I pop into a live stream that you guys are watching very often for like Sean and Alaska's stream or whatever, I'll be on my phone because I'm doing kitchen stuff. Um, if ever I sort of pop in and say hey friendlies and you guys say hi to me and you don't hear back from me it's because i'm on my phone and i find it saps my will to live to try adding people on the phone youtube must fix that um Mark says, depends on where you're camping. Provincial parks don't even permit collecting, sawing, or chopping, chopping trees. That is true. <clears throat> that is true. Um, but I still bring an axe because they they only have like one size of split logs, right? And because I like to start my fire without like that goo or whatever, you know, I like to start it with shavings and moss or grasses or, or something and feather sticks and flint and steel or a ferro rod i gotta i gotta cut those things down to you know the three stages of wood starting with like slivers pencil sized and then and then bigger um they don't they don't do that right so i would still bring an axe or or a, a robust knife for batoning and stuff and bring bring a a log or two down to uh tinder and kindling size Destiny, I did. I did read it out. Sheesh. Why you gotta be like that? Uh, Destiny says, saw for the win. Okay, so why? Now, <clears throat> there are cases when I would agree with you. Um, if you only have a saw and you you have a like a long stick to split down the middle, then what you can do, I did um, demonstrate this very poorly um, one of the videos I did out at Russell's place because um, <laughs> the wood gave up faster than I thought it would. But 
um, say you got a roundabout, yay, or whatever, cut down halfway through, do this sort of in the middle, or, well, you don't have to, cut down halfway through, and then grab one side of that cut, heave it against um, against a tree, um, turn so that the cut side is on the back, and it should split off that, that part. Uh, it's a good, it's good in a pinch. Uh, sometimes it works really well for me. Sometimes it kind of doesn't. Whatevs, you know. But so you, there is a case where a saw could stand in for a, an axe in certain instances. Um, Destiny says it's more versatile than a knife for, for her. That's the thing about tools, about tools is, it's all philosophy, practically. The only thing that's not is you need a tool that will do the job, right? Everything else is philosophy. What will do the job? <clears throat> I just told you you can get a, a saw to do the axe job to a certain extent in certain contexts. Um, I think it might be easier to make a knife stand in for an axe than a saw, but, you know... Uh, Serge says, and this is a great philosophy, I tend, honestly, I tend to get the fizz from the tools I've worked on. I have a couple of axes I've hafted and a knife rehandled. Yep. Yeah, because there's there's great memories tied up with that. Of course. Absolutely, I get that. <clears throat> um, in fact, still here. That's one of the reasons... I like this number four so much because remember the, the episode where I brought this handle sort of into usability, not usability. It was usable. It's just, it wasn't pleasant. I remember I, I took, I took the sander to it and everything and beat it into shape. Come on. You, you can't pay for memories like that. Like, uh, no, it's okay. Okay, but I mean, this was a, a factory second, right? So I wasn't expecting fantabulousness, and I good because I didn't get it, and it's still just a little jinky. But I mean, uh, I worked on this; I made this handle better than it was. You can't beat that. You, you just can't. You can't beat memories, right? You can't beat pride of workmanship. <clears throat> when you've taken something and made it your own. Even on even on this, like, um, all I did on this was I wet formed the sheath. I did a video on that too, but that was back when my channel was terrible, so I don't really tell people to check that out. Um, I do miss the apartment I did it in, though. Uh, and, you know, I put this, you know, that was my first little knot work and everything, but... Um, if this is far from my nicest knife, it's pretty nice though. Um, but I have warm memories of using this knife. It was my first serious knife. Well, the first serious knife that made it through my first uh, year of doing this. Look at how beat up that sheath is. The knife itself is beat up as well. This thing has gone through some hell. And it has not let me down. Desert ironwood, which is a wood that I love. But again, this was not, this isn't a thousand dollar custom job. You know, he was sort of early in his career. Um, <clears throat> David says, why do you, why do you need something? There's enough broken branches, twigs on the ground to start and maintain a fire. Is it for defense? Okay. Well, what if, um, what if it's a wet day and you have to get down to the inner part of, of a twig to get it to, uh, to get it to, to light, right? What are you going to use if, if you don't have some kind of cutting tool? Uh, I, last time I checked, none of us are beavers, right? We can't just, uh, I think you need something. I just don't think we need what we think we need when we're putting our sort of our bucket list together. Cause a lot of this stuff is bucket list, you know, I want a Jack Lore knife. I will never have one. <clears throat> a, because they're just, you know, they're priced in pounds sterling. 
the shipping is crazy and he's he doesn't sell it outside the uk anymore because it's just too much trouble to get royal mail to send everything that's all i'm saying about that because otherwise we may get it may turn political and uh, that bores me to tears um Grace says, I don't have the strength in my arms to swing an axe properly, so I prefer a saw. If I'm only cutting small stuff, the Baka boy will do for larger stuff than a bow saw. Um, <clears throat> if you use a saw a lot, you've, you're probably a lot stronger than you think. It, But I get it, because it's a totally different set of muscles. Is it an actual different set of muscles? Yeah, there, there's some different stuff happening there, right, from this to, to this. But, <clears throat> but I get what you're saying. And some people are just like, some people start again. <clears throat> some people are very similar to that philosophy. They want the saw. I just love the axe. Um, Mark says, I found that the safest and also kid friendly way to split logs, even down to kindling, is a kindling cracker XL with a three pound sledge. I do not know what a kindling cracker is. Oh, is that that thing that sort of. It's like a, a blade thing that stands kind of like this, and you put the, the wood on it and then hit it. Is that what that is? Um, <clears throat> do I have a, a mod who can look up the kindling cracker and drop a uh, a link in this in the chat so that I can uh, so we can all like I'll share it and we can all take a look at what that, what it is. Uh, Raspberry Rock has paid for some pretty fond memories. Fair enough. Selfish gets a certain kind of satisfaction from splitting a log with an axe. <clears throat> Saw won't give that kind of instant gratification. I so here's how I use my tools. I use the saw for bucking <clears throat> or for for cutting down to, to lengths, right? I mean, I, I kind of I have a hard time calling it bucking when I'm cutting a branch, but yay. Do you know what I'm saying? Into like small rounds that I can then split easily. <clears throat> I use the axe for splitting big stuff. Um, I will sometimes go down to kindling size with an axe just because I love using an axe, um, like a small axe, whatever. Uh, but <clears throat> I will often baton with a knife um, purely to piss off certain YouTube viewers. Just kidding. Uh, I will often baton with the knife once it gets down to that kind of size. <clears throat> so, like, my outdoors philosophy has a space for each of those tools. <clears throat> but if I don't want to bring all of those tools, like, I could leave the saw at home and just, you know, chop, um, you know, just chop the wood like that. But uh oh, my connection is unstable. Can you guys still see me? I think we're okay. <clears throat> Streamer is telling me that my connection is unstable. So if you guys get a whole bunch of um, uh, buffering or whatever, please let me know. Also, did anyone see adver advertisements? <clears throat> um. Country Boy says, for now, I'm back on the computer. I might still lose my shift. Thank you for, uh, you know. <laughs> Russell is kicking for Steve Grounds. Is that because he's, mm, I was about to say something stupid. Um, <laughs> um, so, as Sal said, I talked about the, the gratification that comes from chopping, which I agree with. Um, Russell said a lot more work, though, Sal. And then Sal says, Lots of work, but still better than hitting the gym. David asks, if you choose to carry a knife, what size should it be? Does size matter? All right. We will take the question as a serious question. Um, that's Does size matter? thing can be read so many ways. I like a four-inch blade. That's my comfort zone. The vast majority of what I have is a four-inch blade when i say four inch you know within you know like 4.1 3.9 blah 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 um <clears throat> i like a four inch blade there's you know i can baton a lot with it bigger stuff no but i do tend to carry an axe as well um <clears throat> but as i as i sort of hinted earlier if you're carrying like a six inch blade, you might not need an axe. 
right? Like for me, it's a lot harder to leave the ax at home when I've got a four inch blade than if I had like a big honk and chopper or like a five inch blade or something. Uh, <clears throat> I believe the Grumman, the uh, Grumman number four is a five. I, I believe it's a four, five inch blade. Russell, do you know off the top of your head if the Grumman number four is a five inch blade? Um, and I like this knife, so I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not religious about it, but I do really prefer a four, four inch blade. I, I think that's a five or something, maybe, maybe over five actually. <clears throat> I'm shocked by how much I love this ugly ass blade shape. It reminds me of like this is what you get if if Nesmuk was Canadian. Such a cool knife. But I do say, you know, needs versus wants. I wish this was a flat ground. Like I wish I'd been able to buy a flat ground because this would be my my bush kitchen knife for sure. Scan this kind of scandy slash um, spear grind, it's not ideal for, for food prep. So if ever I I can get one of these in a flat ground, I mean, because they do make them. It's just they didn't they don't make them in did I say this was a factory second? No, this was a kit knife. It, this is a kit knife. I, I actually put the handle on this. <clears throat> um, but I do not I do not believe that I could get a flat ground as a kit knife where I bought this from. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I, I don't know. Like, it's as I said, like... Because I carry an axe, I can get away with a four-inch blade. Um, my buddy Mike Morton, who you guys, who anyone who has watched my whiskey live streams will recognize. Um, he's also been on this channel live streams before as well. Uh, he is adamant about a three-inch blade. He, of course, always has an axe with him as well. Um, and so it's, for him, it's, it's all about a three-inch blade. He, he, likes them, he likes the smaller blades. Uh, there are cases in which they are kind of more handy, but... Yeah, this stuff is all philosophy, you know? <clears throat> uh, no, if I'm if I'm pouring the... Uh, has anyone seen Al around? If I'm pouring this, it doesn't need to sit. It's a fully engineered whiskey. Um, it's a blend. It has no age statement on it. So, I mean, it's probably three years. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so Russell went directly where I, I tried to avoid going. <clears throat> <clears throat> so did Country Boy. Guys! Big but not awkward. Ah, okay. So, Serge has done us a flavor by... Let me just open this in a new tab. And then I shall... Yes, it's exactly what I think it is. Isn't this that thing that was designed by, like... Um, a young girl in New Zealand or something. Hold on, I'm going to share it. <clears throat> Present. Present, arms. <clears throat> so here you go. The king of kindling has arrived. This seems bigger than I thought it was. <clears throat> but yeah, it's exactly what I think it is. Like, um, it's a ring that holds the log above the blade thing, and then you just wail on. Oh, I see. Okay, there's. It's just that there's a big, big honking one. All right. <clears throat> easy delivering. Easily easy delivery. Do we have a, a price on this? Buy now. The fire kindling cracker king firewood splitter. That's that's big. Buy now. Let's see how much it costs. In New Zealand, Australia, United States, Japan, United Kingdom, rest of Europe. Ah, Canada. I'll check a, an American price for you guys as well. The original is $139.97 for four interest-free payments of $34.99. Now, okay, so I don't know where the hell Rittenhouse is, but apparently it's for us up here. Um, so the, the king, which is the big one, the big honking one, $210.97. So for those of you who live oh here in the United States, 
What are we talking about? I don't need your exclusive deals. I don't live in your country. There you go. <clears throat> yeah, those prices are a little better. Uh, the King one regular price is one forty nine ninety nine American, which probably is still no stores within a hundred miles. Shut up! I don't know miles. So yeah, there we go. Oh, of course, you guys didn't see the uh, the window with the pricing. <sighs> what else? <clears throat> I shall stop the screen. Um, Russell says, I don't have enough bushcraft experience to talk about this stuff with any authority. Yeah, but you know what you do have is um, outdoors um, is off-gridding experience. Um, <clears throat> what you need is a good water source. What you want is a well. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not talking about this in a specific bushcraft uh, kind of context. In fact, um, I'm just taking a look here. Um, I pinged Kevin Callan yesterday and I said, <clears throat> oh, it's because I'm using the wrong, hold on, switch account to Jess Corbett. So I pinged Kevin Callan, the happy camper, about this because uh, he and I have talked about this kind of stuff a little bit. And I said, hello, I'm going to talk outdoors, needs versus wants for tomorrow night's live. You know, you need a paddle, you want a nice wooden one, or you need a cutting tool, you want a $200 axe. And I said that this is too short of notice to ask you to come on, but is there a total index case for paddling that you think I should mention? <clears throat> and what he said was, I'm not going to read you what he said, because it was, you know, um, he said, but one is, you know, you need a canoe, but you want the lightest one possible, but it costs five grand. And that one really kind of speaks to me because that's what I want. You know, like I've identified that <clears throat> 20 years ago, um, a canoe purchase would have been much simpler for me because, okay, it's a 70 pound canoe. I'm just pulling numbers out of the ether. You know, it's a 50 kilo canoe to 40 kilo canoe, you know. Okay, so portaging sucks, but I can still do it. Like nowadays, something heavy, heavy, I would have a much harder time staying upright with. You know, my knees don't work the way they used to. <clears throat> I'm just, I don't have the kind of strength I used to have. But what that does mean is, is much more expensive. But you know what? I can just buy a simple canoe, <clears throat> excuse me, off of Kijiji or something, put it up at my mother-in-law's place and paddle around the lake just to get the paddling in. Do you know what I'm saying? Can I take it on a seven-day canoe camping trip? No, but I don't have one of those in my immediate future anyway, and I can rent for that. But I want the $4,000, you know, Swift, right? <clears throat> and a lot of people feel very similarly about stuff like that. Um, and it's it's the example I, I, I'm glad he used because this guy wrote, I think two or three books, his first two or three books he wrote using a canoe that he got for free because he pulled it out of the town dump. Right. So if any, so if ever there's an index case of use what you got, Kevin Callan's first two books, three, I don't know, are, are that <clears throat> found a canoe in the dump, used the hell out of it, has a career as a, as a paddling author. Yeah, okay, you know. Um, there was something else. and Oh, and something else he said, um, or you need to do a trip in, in the far north, but you can't afford the, the money and time, so you just want to be out there. Um, that's a good one, too, because, again, it's, it's like he's talking directly to me, right? And I, I wonder sometimes how... how wanting x that i can't afford just means well why why even bother doing y that i can afford because it's not as good as x and, and meanwhile then there's choice z right over there that's that's terrific as well but i wasn't even looking that way because i'm so fixated on this thing that i want and can't have so <clears throat> those are good good um good examples for sure uh Kristen did have an ad okay 
Um, okay, so it says that the image sucks, but we still see you. Great. I'm so happy that I'm paying big bucks to uh, StreamYard to stream in uh, in HD. David, I think David is uh, not being entirely serious with us, but he says, what kind of axe, saw, or knife do you need in a boreal forest? Interestingly, there was a guy whose channel name was North of 60 now. Not up North of 60, but North of 60 now, and I think he was talking about his age. And where he lived, um, he said that because it was all oak and stuff, that he didn't feel the need for an axe. He just had a big chopper. And I did I never understood that. <clears throat> because to me, I mean, Oak, of course you'd use an axe for that. But I mean, this guy had a couple of really big honking chopper knives. And he was doing just fine. You know, making fires, chopping up wood. I really do think it, it comes down to what... Excuse me. What your headspace is <clears throat> when it comes to what you imagine an outdoors life to be. Like I grew up Canadian, right? So you know, the outdoors is you know traditionally is like a plaid flannel shirt under like a lumber jacket, you know, and a boy's axe or a, a double edge, you know, and a toque and jeans. <clears throat> You know, a uh, a 303 British, you know, propped up against a tree, you know, ready for if a deer walks by or something like there's a real traditional Canadian view of the outdoors. And it, it, a lot of the American view of the of the outdoors is very similar up around like Michigan and stuff like that. But in in all the time that I was growing up. It was never a seven foot, uh, a seven inch blade as a chopper instead of the axe, right? Um, <clears throat> but you know, if I grew up in Florida or the Philippines, maybe it's a machete, right? Because you sure as heck don't need um, like an axe like this if you're surrounded by bamboo. Right. And that's a case where a need versus want thing, it's kind of skewed because if you're not surrounded by boreal or mixed hardwood or, you know, the kind of forest that we tend to have around here in Canada and the northern United States, that changes the shape of the tools that get used. And that is a, a bona fide case of different needs versus different wants. I see that I'm four minutes to 10, which means that in four minutes I should have an advert and I should pour my whiskey. So what I'll do is I'll time it for after you guys say, oh, I got an ad, then I'll pour. <clears throat> um, yeah, okay, so the number four is five and a half inches. All right, wow, how late am I? Oof. Yeah, I'm 12 minutes behind. Sorry, guys. Jim says, I can do a lot more with a four to five inch knife than an axe. Don't get me wrong. I could do too much damage with an axe. Um, I wonder if a lot of it also comes down to what you tend to do. Like, are you building lean-tos or are you just building fires? And by the way, I said lean-to. There's another thing. Yeah, excuse me. In fact, now I wish that um, Tenenbaum was here because um, he has a collection of classic tents, but like you need shelter, right? Um, you don't need like a high end tent. You want a high end tent. You want like a hubba hubba or something that you can pack easily, right? <clears throat> and easy packing tents comes with a price tag. It really does. But what you need is shelter. And if you have the time to put in like a half day building a lean to, so like not if you're there for one overnighter, but you know, then you've got shelter. It's that simple. But some people want a really nice tent. And I see that. I have a I have a garbage tent, but I also have a really nice tent. 
and it there's a whole you know mm. sleeping in a hot summer night in a tent where you can unzip the windows and have just the screen so that the wind blows through or the breeze comes through but not the mosquitoes that's really nice but you just need shelter you know um country boy says you need a seminal knife in the boreal to david evans i i could i i agree with that philosophy um raspberry rock says haltafor is a medium handle for bear defense fair enough i would love to watch that uh, go down Peanut trucker, can you do the second half of your life with that Australian accent? No, I most likely could not. <laughs> um, David says, yeah, I think David might either be, uh, he might either be enjoying some beverages or he's just uh, trying to trying to go after me. What about toilet paper? Sandpaper would be used for dual purpose things. Yeah, well, you you get back to me. You try it out and you get back to me on that. <clears throat> David just checked out Mora Knives on Amazon. Nice price point. Hold on. Let me see. What, what do you got? Now, if... Oh, you checked it on Amazon.com because you're currently in the United States. Am I right? Here we go. This is this is really good, David, because this goes to what I was talking about, how you just need a cutting tool. You don't need a, a fancy knife. You need a cutting tool. The more new, new companion. I have a companion, sixteen bucks US. And the thing is, it's, so list is twenty one ninety nine US. And this knife used to be twelve bucks in Canada. I mean, the last ten years have shown some real, some real price increases. You know, <clears throat> um, look at that. Oh, that's a. A floating fixed blade knife. I guess this is for fishing or like maybe boating. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that's a stick. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in for boating, I guess. Um, 100% Swedish stainless steel. Yeah, stainless. Floating knife, ideal for adventures where every ounce counts. This floating fisherman's knife features unique flotation properties designed specifically for marine environments. Perfect for boating, kayaking, fishing, sailing, canoeing, and more. Premium blade, 3.8 inch blade is made of Swedish stainless steel, a material known for its razor sharpness, high hardness, exceptional toughness, and excellent corrosion resistance. Ergonomic handle, floating fishing knife features a barrel shaped handle made of natural cork layered over durable polymer and comes equipped with a soft friction grip and sturdy finger guard protective polymer polymer sheath high visibility sheath comes equipped with a practical belt loop and smart button system which allows you to attach several craft knives to each other specifications blade thickness 0.55 inches oh 1.5 1.4 millimeters blade length is 3.8 inches which is 97 millimeters. Total length is 9.25 inches, which is 235 millimeters. And the net weight is 2.7 ounces, which is 49 grams. Very nice. What I'm looking for is a robust to see what they're, what they're going for now. How heavy is that so, compared to like a normal knife? I mean, you can get a serviceable knife for, oh, hey, look who's here. This means I better put the cans on so I can hear. <laughs> this also means it's 10 o'clock, so I should be pouring my, my whiskey. Jess, I've been talking to you for the last five minutes. No, you haven't. You saw that I didn't oh, have my, my cans on. No, you were little you're you're like this big. You you're like this big. No, that's just my ego. I'm actually human size. So you're you're this big. I've I've seen it. Anyway. Hey. Hey, how's it going? I was trying to figure out how heavy that knife is compared to like regular, like a regular more of that size. Let's say like, is it like half the weight because it's like, is it just like a empty handle? I don't think it's half the weight. I don't think it's that much lighter. Um, in fact, well, hold on. I'll check up a companion. Um, so, uh, okay. Yeah. It's half the weight. 
a regular companion hmm. is 110 grams. So 40. Wow. So is it just a, is it just a like a empty handle then? Like a what's the word I'm looking for? Air filled handle? I think what it probably is is that the handle inside is actually very, very thin. Oh, you're talking about the like the um right, because it, it's got a cork full outer. it's so you're saying it's got a full tang, but the, then that's like there's there's no way that's got a full tang at like twenty seven dollars American. No way. Sorry, half tang, quarter tang. Yeah, something. yeah, it's a rat tail for sure. Okay. All right. But I'm not I'm not sure. We'll have to buy one and rip it apart. <laughs> that's all they're good for. No. Mora. Sorry, I'm not a Mora fan. Um, I wasn't either. I mean, maybe I'm still not, but I was put off by Mora's by all the, the discussion on like Bushcraft USA and everything about how if it breaks, you just throw it away. And I, I hate throwaway culture. Oh, that's that's no good for Bushcraft. Unless so, you're talking about matches. That's the only thing I want to throw away. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I didn't I didn't touch Mora's forever. And then I was just like, you know what? If I'm going to sell myself as a bushcraft youtuber and all this stuff i should at least know i should at least know what they're like to use so i, I bought the robust and i bought a, a companion and the ergos on them are very good and they're very easy to sharpen like there's a lot to like about them but i rat tail tang throw it away if it breaks I'm like, oh nope well for that i was gonna say for that money but boy i yeah i don't i Am I just old? I don't get an inflation. I've totally turned into my parents. <laughs> yeah, inflation really bugs me because, like, literally, my moras were like twelve dollars and eighteen dollars, I think, when I bought them, and now pff, you can't get them for that. <clears throat> okay, Mark Johns is out because he's he's yawning. So if you're still here and I didn't miss you, good night, Mark. Thanks for popping night, by. Serge is also out. Good night, Serge. He's already yeah. on. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But, uh, Everyone's just saying good night. Um, Jim says, my truck thermometer is reading 54 degrees Fahrenheit, and the stars are out are just beautiful. So 54, um, so what is that, like 20, 20-ish? 20 uh, no, 70 would be 20, and 50 would be 10. Okay, so, so it's about 12. Yep. That's how I extrapolate. <laughs> Fair enough. Definitely. Caramelly goodness, vanilla. I'm gonna. Oh, sorry. Do the. Do your notes. B flat. D F B flat. D, F, B flat. Arpeggio. You did. A, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's wonderful. <laughs> mm. Totally did an arpeggio. Spiciness on the tongue that isn't necessarily there in the nose, but it's still a beautiful dram. Country Boy says the best car, the best part of hey, I'm gonna start that again. <laughs> the best part of camping to me is opening all the windows on my canopy and falling asleep with the breeze blowing through. I love that. Unless the breeze is coming from my rear end. It does scare the bears away though. I see I started reading that before I started reading that out loud before I read it. Yeah, that's dangerous. Yeah. Depending on who's saying it. Was that Weblord? Yeah, you gotta. Um, Jim says, oh. I really like my Mora Knife Companion, but the real treat is the sheath that Britt made for it. Mrs. Freak of Nature. I don't think I've seen any pictures of that, Jim. Hmm. Country Boy said, time for some bourbon. Yeah, man. It's, I... it's funny how um, a nice sheath can really um, go with a, make a knife just so much better, right? Yeah, it can elevate the experience in a big way. Oh, okay, so Chris is out. Good night, mister. Speak to you later. Should have joined earlier. Let me share a... I just did... A, I, I'm looking at, on Amazon.ca, the cheapest knives, bushcraft knives, available. See that? The, the third from the left on the top row? That one there? If you mean that the didn't, on the right, uh, the one in the center on the top row. <laughs> um, if that one didn't have that finger guard, that would be an amazing bush kitchen knife. Oh, you see, I like that. 
Oh, uh, yeah, you can't have that for a kitchen knife. But I was going to say, I really like that one. Yeah, I like that one, too. Oh, I do want to point out that David Evans says he just bought a knife. You mean like tonight? You mean like we, we're bad influences? Too soon, David. Too soon. We're going to go for this uh, one with all the raindrops on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's really nice. <laughs> what um, is the raindrops on? <laughs> that surf, one on the bottom on the extreme left looks pretty cool, too, as a... Again, it looks like it would be a bushcraft kitchen knife. Can you click it's on Damascus? that? Damascus? The Damascus? Yeah. Is it a Damascus or just a... It's pretty nice. But like for twenty three ninety nine, like what's the steal on that, right? Arabesquitic wavy stonewash pattern. 7CR17 stainless. I, I have no idea what that is, but somebody can look that up. Okay, I thought for a second it was the same as this uh, Victorinox, but it's not. Um, but I can tell you just from that um, that description, the Arabitic, that this is probably uh, Chinesium. Oh, for, for that price? I'm sure yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, so the handle is Arabesquitic Weavy Stone Wash Pattern. Oh, on the blade. That's the blade. You, um, okay, my card a handle. Okay. It's an interesting. I wonder if um, I wonder if that gives it a better grip. I'm thinking, probably not. No, I think they just try to make it look fancy to uh, cover the fact that it's a twenty three dollar knife. Yeah. Oh, cool. But the thing is, you know, I'm here dissing the you know that twenty three dollar Chinese knife. But at the end of the day, we're, we're what I just said throughout this entire live stream is you need a cutting tool. You don't need a fancy freaking knife. So, I mean, shut up, Jesse. Right? If somebody, if somebody is getting kitted out for their first year of bushcrafting, buy this freaking knife. Buy the Chinesium knife. Right? Because if you spend twenty three bucks on the Chinesium knife instead of two hundred on the uh, on the Garberg, then that means you can also buy huh. an entire fire right you can kit yourself out for for fire stuff you can you know i think that buying those are actually i thought those were right raindrops or those are like pits or something yeah they're, they're divots. Pitted or divots yeah i mean it's supposed to look like um a a forged finish i mean it's not a forged finish but it's supposed to look like it i think it's a cool looking knife Creator's pattern. Oh, so C nine C R eighteen M O V. Gosh. It's a pretty cool looking knife. Yeah, I like it. I I might have to buy that. Yeah. I support you in that. Comes with a sheath. Yep. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, Country Boy says, hold on a second. Country Boy says, I'd like to make a nice custom sheath. The problem is I need the exact knife in my possession to form the sheath. I can only own so many knives. Yeah. Um, yeah, you would need like, you know, Jesse says, I want a custom sheath for something. If I had a knife, um, I would have to send it to you for sure um guys who make sheaths uh, will often have a whole bunch of knives so that they can do but you know what am i knocking over here okay, hold on. um oh, jennifer is out as well good night uh but you know like uh, there are so many examples of you just need a tool. Oh yeah, but what? Yeah, what I was saying, looking at those Chinesium knives, is um, if it cuts, Chinesium doesn't necessarily have to mean bad. It just means it's not a high end knife. Oh, my pole. So I just want to say that um, if you can only take one cutting tool to the bush, <clears throat> the winner is the axe with forty seven percent. The 
runner up is the knife with 37 percent and pulling up the rear is saw with 16 percent yeah it wasn't i didn't really take much part in that conversation i think I, th I i definitely believe the saw has a place in the bush and and i would you know i i think maybe the the a great combo is a knife and a saw or an axe and a saw but not a knife and an axe if that makes sense mm -hmm. and especially like you know this bushcraft around my cabin which is all i'm confident about talking about is just littered with trees that have been down by beavers and mm -hmm. great firewood and and i'm sorry david evans but if you have to have a fire going throughout the night to stay warm you're not going to I mean, you have to have a massive pile of branches and twigs you found on the on the ground, right? Right. And it's going to be four times larger than you think it needs to be. But if you <clears> find <throat> a good seasoned tree that a beaver has taken down, you're really going to want that saw. Like you try to use an axe to cut off rounds from that would just take you forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Country Boy says unto me. That Chinese may not be bad, but it sure as hell ain't good for more than a weekend. But what I'm saying is for someone who's just building up their kit, <clears throat> they don't yet know what shape of knife they're really going to bond with, right? They may be trying out knives. Uh, then buying a bunch of Chinese knives is an excellent way to figure out, like, what grind you're most comfortable, you're developing affinity for and all that stuff. And it's a great way to build out more kit at the same price. You know, because putting together a good fire kit can be expensive if you're not careful with it. So if you can get a, a serviceable knife off of Amazon, like what Russell was just showing, although for a little bit more money, those BPS, I think they're called the Ukrainian knives, are, are absolute deal for the money. That one that I, I have and did a review of for like $41, rock solid absolutely rock solid but like you know those chinese you knives or moras or whatever if it gets you cutting and it gets you into the woods and it allows you the money you need to buy a first aid kit what's well, a kit out of first aid kit or a fire kit or buy like a bug net then it's doing the job as a beginner's tool you know Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I, I think you're not going to know what you want until you know what you don't want, <laughs> which is a lot of, like, the very first time you, you jam your knife into something, you bend it sideways, and you, the tip breaks off, or... Yeah. Which, have you ever, like, does everybody here have a, a, a knife in their sil silverware drawer that has its end bent or chipped off because you tried to use it for something, like, popping something open? <laughs> a knife? I have several like that. But like <laughs> this one here is a perfect example of that, right? LMF2. Some people adore this thing. Um, it's a great knife for chopping your way out of a burning helicopter. But as like I bought this, I inadvertently bought this and the, um, the Bear Grylls Ultimate Fine, uh, fine Edge at, on the same weekend. Which was an expensive weekend for a guy who was a freelancer. Um, this is a workshop pry bar for me. This was a terrible bushcraft knife. Nothing wrong with the knife, although for something that's supposed to be robust enough for like Marines and stuff, it's shaken apart a little bit, you know. So, I mean, made in America is still shaken apart a bit. It's supposed to be a military survival knife. Um, I'm glad I have it, but it's never going to come to the bush with me again. It was <laughs> not fit for purpose. I think we all have knives that we really like, but we'll never actually use. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this one only gets used around the, the workshop. Um, but it was still valuable because it taught me a lot about what I don't want in a bushcraft knife. Do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, take another little sip of my whiskey. Whiskey. 
Jim sent me an Instagram pic of the sheath that was made for his knife. Allow me to go to the proper Instagram account. Whoops, that's not the proper Instagram account. No, Jim said no. Don't leave just yet, Jim. Hold on, hold on. I just want to show that the... Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to find you, Jim. On the Instas of Grams. I can't remember last time I logged into Instagram. I wonder if there's anybody tried to message me. <laughs> James. Oh, yeah. Nice. Very nice. Can I turn it? Nope. Look at... Oh, I just want to cover his name. That's pretty nice. That's very nice. Very nicely done. I like it. Holy crap. I got a ton, ton of people following me. On Instagram? Yeah. yeah. All right. See you later, Jim. Thanks for showing the um, the uh, the picture of that sheath. Hey, Homie Omi is in the house. How's it going? Knife talk. I'm in. Yeah, I was talking about, and you've got some really cool stuff. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're talking about how like needs and wants are not always the same thing. I was using knives as a uh, as an example about how I've got some very nice knives here. You know, I've got like some. I've got one custom. Um, I've got an F1 here, but that you need a cutting tool, and sometimes all you can afford is the Mora knife, the Mora knife, the Mora knife. Um, <clears throat> Russell has um, was talking about some, you know, some interesting philosophies about it as well. Uh, David as well. There's a lot of cool talk about. Uh, it's funny how whenever you start talking about tools, people like to talk. People like to give examples. People like to show what they got. You know, oh, yeah. there, there's a real magic to, to good bush tools. Especially something like a knife where I've talked about this before, like knives and fire and this, you know, things like that are so, they're, they're part of our instinct. Just, that, you know, water. <laughs> this is <real>. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're, they're very sort of, there's, there's a primordialness there. Um, no, it's like, I, that's the word I was in for. I ever um, show you guys my, uh, whoops, don't break it. I ever show you guys my notebook? Maybe. So. Are there notes in it? Yeah. Um, I have it sort of split up. Um there are two inserts. One is just sort of like for thoughts and stuff, right? Just like random notes. I'm not going to show my handwriting too much because, well, it doesn't matter. My handwriting is garbage. Um, <clears throat> so just like little journal entries. And the other one I have set up as kind of a, what do they call it? A bullet journal, right? So I've got um, like an index right and um i have like each page is a week of to do's and stuff i did not need to spend this entire package cost me i think like here i've got a mood a mood log and gratitude log and stuff like that um i have a, a list of bushcraft videos that i want to make um all you need is a little hillroy but I have to have stuff that gives me the fizz. Well, how much was it? Uh, all told, this was this is like seventy bucks, Canadian. Is it leather? Yeah, looks like Le leather. leather. It's Japanese, although I think it's technically made in Thailand. Oh, Japanese cow. Japanese cow. Um, <laughs> fountain pen, because I do love the fountain pen. You don't need this, but having this keeps me dumping my thoughts and organizing my time because what I have absolutely identified is two things. If I don't write it down, it gets forgotten. And yes, and um, I, I don't want to use I, I don't want to use this 
for my to do's and everything. Um, because I work in tech, I work in bits all day. I feel a real pull towards the analog when you know for my for the stuff that matters to me. I like to write stuff down. I feel that writing something with a pen ingrains it in my head a lot better than just tapping, tapping the message out does. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, a homie uh, showed me his, his collection of knives at one point, and it was, he's got some cool stuff. If anybody's paying attention, there's a thunderstorm going on outside right now. <laughs> you Is might there? see lightning through my sliding doors. Oh, June bugs out there. Hold on. Oh, for God. <laughs> I'm here talking about how I forget everything, and he's left his dog out in a lightning so storm. Good boy. What knife do you really want a custom sheath for? I'll buy one and um, so I don't even know. I'll tell you, I won't answer that tonight, but let me think on it. There you go. Um, there you go. Good doggies. You good. Oh, you happy? Is she wet? No, no, no. She was just on the deck, but they, neither of them like lightning, thunder. Yeah. yeah. I guess thunder. David bought the folding knife. Oh, the one that you showed me pictures of. Nice. Um, oh, your connection just got uh, a lot better. What did? Your connection. Did it? Nice. Yep. It's been crap for a while. Yeah. Uh, is Kobe leather a thing? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the Travelers Tr Company is a Japanese company. Um, they, they make a lot of their stuff in Thailand. So I don't know. But it's a nice. It's a nice little package. I mean, everything is inserts that you buy. Right, I've got like some emergency money in the back there, um, some you know um, replacement elastics just in case. But what I like about the leather is it'll last forever and get like a patina and get scratched up and used and everything. I like that. I sort of punched my initials into the corner, which you're not going to be able to see, because of course not. It's not Come focusing. on, focus you. There we go. See, I did a lousy job of punching my initials in, but I don't care. I don't want it to look pristine. I have this problem that some of you guys may have. I buy fancy freaking notebooks, and then it's like, I cannot write in it. What if I make mm -hmm. a spelling error? What if I make a typo? Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and so the nice thing about this is because everything in it is an insert, <clears throat> I don't care if I make a spelling error in this. I'm not turning it into art. You know, like some uh, some bullet journals are, you know, they're using paints and stickers. And, no, I don't have the patience for that crap. The inserts cost money, though. Is yeah, like yeah, no. Special, like from that brand, you have to buy special. I think there are third parties that are building for this as well. Um, I just this paper is is um very fountain pen friendly paper uh the company is midori um but yeah it, it's very good paper it's not like thick artsy paper or anything but it's just really good for fountain <coughs> pen. um homie uh, omi uh has a loku for uh for his his belt survival knife so um how big is that we've had this discussion right homie how long is that played on that <laughs> we have the same conversations every time we talk about knives yeah but it's still fun yeah i i would still like um a folding like a pen knife but i'm looking for the one in the nesmic trio right very simple tiny knife two blades that come out um six inch okay Oh, F6 is an extension knife, of course. Honeybee, oh, oh, this does not surprise me. I have Maturi journals. I love them. I use the A5 size for math and engineering, both dot grid and lined. Never met another Maturi fanboy. Uh, you know my buddy Robin? He likes his Maturi as well. Um, I have one of these is the dots, and the other is just plain, I believe. Yeah, and the other is just plain. Uh, this is the passport size, but they do make, I believe, an A5 size as well. I'm not sure about that, actually. 
Homie Omi says it's all about the handles. It's crazy how much it is about the handles. That Silly Bear Grills knife that I had and passed on had a fabulous handle. The ergonomics on that knife were terrific. I just didn't like the blade geometry for what I'm doing. You know, you will sometimes hear someone say, you know, there's no such thing as a bushcraft knife and a survival knife. There are just knives. I hear that. I respect anyone who says that, and I don't freaking agree. Um, the problem is... <laughs> I respect you saying that, but I really don't freaking agree. It's a philosophy, right? But here's the thing. This was designed as a survival knife. This is a garbage bushcraft knife. But if you do end up lying under a car and you have to cut through your way through the window or the door, this knife will do you. It's, it's it, you know, you can beat the crap out of it, as you know, I have. But this blade is no good for anything that you do. I'm going to go on a limb here and say that if I'm trapped underneath a car, I'm probably not cutting myself out with anything. I'm pulling examples out of the ether here. I'm saying like it, it's a good, it's good for what it's designed for, but this is not a bushcraft knife. Um, whereas like, you know, my, um, my Woodler clone, it works great for everything that I do when I'm alone in the woods with a pile of wood to turn into a fire or, you know, uh, into maybe a little, shelter or something but i would not want to depend on it as cutting my way out of an accident of some sort you know I, you know yeah. so like the bear grills knife is a survival knife it's got that it, you know the blade geometry is too thick the angle is too um oblique you know uh, but the handle was terrific, and I love the fact that it, the accents on it were orange because I dropped it in tall yellow grass and found it, and I have lost many things by dropping them out in the woods. I just want to say we don't talk often enough. When we do talk about knives, we don't talk often enough about blade geometry, and we should. We should. Are you seeing the lightning? If anyone can tell whether or not he's being serious, please let me know. No, I'm being serious. <laughs> okay. I know it can be hard to tell with me, but you no, know, I'm being serious on that. Yeah. No, Blade Drummer, just looking at that like Amazon list of knives. By the way, I did buy that one. Because anybody's wondering. Yeah, did you? It's a cool looking knife. Oops. Well, let me share this again. Just just quickly. Like you look at all the different blade geometry going on there, and yep. you, you, uh, you know, like take take this one here for example, that looks yeah. like it's got a a weird what would you call that recurve to the, like is that actually good for anything? Like that just I, seems like I wouldn't. No, nope. like if you're trying to chop, like if you're trying to do kitchen, you know, stuff with that, like if you're you're screwed. You, nope. I mean, it doesn't. It's not going to lie flat on the cutting board. Wouldn't buy it for the same reason I wouldn't buy another Rambo knife. It it looks it's got a look to it, but that one down there has got to be a skinning knife. Like the writing is too small for me to see with my fifty one year old eyes. But is that a skinning knife? Yeah, it does say skinning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's got a really weird blade design to it, but I can see the reason behind it. Whereas that other one up there, does that say it's a hunting knife? Which one? The, the, the one the with one the weird recurve thing? No, no, the one uh, with the yes. weird... Yeah. yeah, it says hunting knife. Yeah, no, no. No, yeah, I don't. That's a metalhead knife. That's what that is. That's, no, you know... Let me, let me see if they... Uh, if a, a bigger picture... Nope. Yeah, that's just... A, why would they do that? Because there's a market for this crap. Because it looks cool? I get... Yeah. Looks cool, pulling it out of the pocket of a jean jacket. Camping outdoor bushcraft. Yellow non-slip handle? Why would it say yellow non-slip handle? Because it was all yellow. <laughs> God. And is that like a nylon sheath? That's a nylon sheath. 
Um, Come on, look at that. That's yeah. a red launch sheath. Yep. Yep, you're right. Yeah. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Um, hold on a second. David says, I still need to buy a Groman number one. The evening is young. You need a Groman number one. He had a Groman number one. Holy shit. Wow. Did you hear that? Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm glad that held off till after the eclipse. <laughs> Holy crap. It's coming your way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, David, you had a Groman number one. So what happened to it? I know what happened to it. <laughs> I wonder what. Hmm, something I'm missing. I, I love the Groman number one. I love the weird shape of it. The the ergonomics on it are terrific. And I love the the old school Canadian aspect of it. I love it. Uh, well, uh, David did check the weather radar and the lightning is right over your place. I think I think we know that now. Well, it's, it's good to know, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't have known. <laughs> Christy wants to know what, what knife did you buy? He just showed it. It's the, uh, it was yeah, all with the squarish right. blade, right? The raindrop. The raindrop. The raindrops keep falling on my blade. Long I'll do, I'll do a, a bushcraft video on it. Yeah. Long handle camper's axe, best for me. I'm not talking about living for living in the bush, but survival. Is that okay? So they have two versions, right? One has this very pretty stacked leather handle, and the other has like a, a rubberized handle. Um, the thing with Estwing and me is I love the stacked leather, but I don't really love their plasticky handles. So which one do you have? Oh, David gave it away to a worthy person. I wonder who that was. And she loves it, David. <laughs> we go at hikes and she grabs it. and Yep. Loves her knife. Way better than that more I bought her. <laughs> which would you love more? more? The, the Mora has the little striker in it. That, uh, oh, yeah, it's the Light My Fire. <laughs> the tiny little... <laughs> yeah. Has she used that? Um, no. Um, whenever we go, we take a proper ferro rod. Hmm. But, um, yeah. David, you should get in here with us. For, like, the last 25 minutes. Um What is it? Is that Pharaoh Rod. Yeah. Victoria Knox Pharaoh Rod. I like a bigger Pharaoh Rod. In some things, size really does matter, and Pharaoh Rods are it, man. Yep. Absolutely. Um. Yep. I've got a lot of knives sitting on this table right now, on this desk. I was gonna bring out all mine, but we just did this recently. Yeah. I do have my um my Holta Force here. You know what? I was looking at the Holta Force website, and I can't even remember which which this is. There, I mean, they're all really similar. Mm -hmm. Such know, a nice axe, like, though. Like, there's lots of different kinds, but I think I probably just went for like the hunter's axe. But you know what? I'm feeling the handle feels like it needs something on it. What do we? What do you generally put on it to? I put tongue oil. Uh, no, I don't. I put um, boiled linseed oil. Boiled linseed? Yeah. So so you actually boil it first? No, you yeah. buy it boiled. You can buy... Okay, there are two kinds of linseed oil. There's raw linseed oil and there's boiled linseed oil. Um, raw linseed oil is demonstrably better, but it takes so long for it to, um, to stop being sticky that most people just use boiled. Um, because the boiled sort of cures... And what you do is uh, the bushcraft um, rule of thumb is like on a axe ha haft or a knife handle or whatever. Um, so you put on a, a coat, you let it sit for about an hour, and then you wipe it off so it doesn't get all sticky on you. Right. When I say you wipe it off, I mean you wipe it off like you want it gone. And then you put another coat. Um, I would do like three coats the first day. Uh, and then you do one coat per day for a week. Then you do one coat per week for a month. 
and then one coat per month for a year and then you just do it when whenever you get back from the bush and you're cleaning your tools any brands you i just with? buy the stuff at canadian tire mm. oh but you have to order right because you're not near a canadian tire well i'm not far from a home hardware but i don't know that they'd have this oh they'll right. have it they'll have it they probably have it yeah yeah um some people would say it's important to look carefully to make sure you're not getting one with like whatever it's called some kind of polymer or something blah 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 but at the end of the day um my canadian tire linseed oil has done me fine and it says nothing about whether or not it's pure on the can but i'm not using it for like a cutting board i'm using it for an axe haft so i'd say whatever you can afford from that uh from that window there is probably fine i would not buy anything too big though because i find that it, it lasts forever <clears throat> and if if it starts to sort of dry around the cap it can really take a lot of heaving to get that cap off so oh, I yeah, don't i'm just gonna go with this this first one here is like 20 bucks so right um yeah oh, david sent me a text message Okay, so Skip has uh, has the uh, the rubber slash plastic one. Um, huh? Check this out. This is a picture that uh, David Evans' daughter took of the uh, celestial event. Oh, cool! Yeah. The clouds made it interesting. Yeah, yeah. We had an absolutely cloudless day. Hmm. Absolutely cloudless. Hold on a sec here. Yeah, I was out on a hike, and I was like, oh, wait, I think the eclipse is happening sometime tonight. Yeah. Okay. That's not working. It's not showing the... Uh... No, it's not. I just... Hold on a second here. How's that? Oh. Focus. There we go. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I just took that with my phone. I kind of regret not bringing a, a bigger camera, but, you know, whatever. Um, so Susie Q has been watching on the TV, so no chat. She's on her computer now. Uh, yeah, I love what Country Boy says. Ap applying Boy Lindsay Oil as a career, not a job. It kind of, it can really feel that way when you're, you know, you've got a new axe, and you're like, okay, got to put the oil on. Um, and it's important to, like, leave it on for an hour and then wipe it the hell off. Because otherwise it you... can get sticky. So what about all my my tools outside? Like I've got a shovel, I've got a hoe, and all of them do it all. You know when you buy a new um, a, a new tool, it's got that sort of um, shellac on on the wooden handle. You scrape that off right away, and you and you start oiling it up right away. Hey, Bettina's here. Bettina. Yeah, I was watching hey, earlier on your phone, but it died, so I'm watching on my TV. She likes to be called Betty. Does she? Betty. Yeah. Bettina, do you really like to be called Betty, or is Russell being a you don't have to ask her? Just everybody start calling her Betty. She likes that. Okay, we got to talk about one more want versus need. Mm -hmm. Need versus want. Wait, is this a want or a need? You see, here's the problem, Russell. We got distracted by bladed objects, so I haven't gone into like any of the other examples I had. But uh, yeah, oh, what, what well, you got? Let's... Well, no, we can, we can, we got 20 minutes. We wanna... But I like talking about plated objects. Oh. You, we'll talk about one of the things on your list while I figure out a way to grab it. Okay. Um, here's one thing that I was going to bring up <clears throat> is a way to, um, to, to um, what do you call it? What's another word for desiccate? Like your food? You know, when you dry out your food, dehydrate food, right? Um, <sighs> You know, if you can afford it, um, freeze drying is amazing, but the freeze dryers are expensive as shift. Um, I have a, um, oh, damn it, Russell. You know how I feel about that saw. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Yeah, it sure is. And that came with the, with the handle that goes yeah. on the, on the end of the blade. Yeah. So yeah, cool. there's one here and then there's yeah. another one here, right? Love it. Love that. So I'm, so I'm holding it with a tissue because it's all oily and I don't want to get oil all over my hands. Hmm. 
But I guess I could put the linseed oil on the handle too, right? Yeah. Absolutely. After I get all the dust off of it. But yeah, love this thing. Right now it's a wall ornament, but it's actually made to be used. Not yeah. just a... I think I've asked you where you got that, right? I think you did. And uh, why? Do you want to buy one? I mean, it was stupidly expensive. Yeah, I know. I know. I. Yeah. yeah we can't see the nail on the wall. I definitely want one of those, though. Um, but, you know, like, I, I have a, a very affordable um, air dehydrator, right, with a, the fan and the heat and everything. And it's very affordable for me because I got it for free because somebody got one and never used it. Uh, but you can dehydrate your stuff just using your oven on the, lo the lowest setting, right? Now, I've got a very modern oven, so it doesn't go below 170. But if you got one that goes down to, like, 140, then that's amazing. So, you know, I mean, the bushcraft and outdoors world is is full of people marketing you solutions that you don't necessarily need, but they make everything so much easier and sometimes just more stylish that you really want them. Mm -hmm. Oh, Petita's having a wicked thunderstorm, too. Well, she's pretty close to you, right? You know, and I'll tell you what, that Asian woman didn't help matters. You know, the one with that, all the brand new gear in her oh, video? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah. The brown toys. <clears throat> it's um, people yeah. like that. Well, yeah, because like every video, they have a bunch of new stuff to, to show off. Yeah, that, that doesn't help at all. I could really go for a piece of cheese. Just a piece. Just a piece. What time are we at? We're at 22.45. Okay. Just 15 minutes left to go. I think Russell is pouring himself a dram. I'll pour myself one more small dram. I don't think you could call this a dram. To finish, to finish the night off with. I will show one more time the whiskey that I'm having. Mm. Whiskey. Whiskey. <clears throat> Nika, whiskey from the barrel, from Japan, but not allowed to call itself a Japanese whiskey. What else is on your list? Oh, like the dehydrator that I was just telling you about? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, Grace says exactly dehydrator, 40 bucks for, or even free versus freeze dryer for a, a, like a couple of grand, like 1600 and up. Absolutely. And well, those are two different things, though. I know, but what I'm saying is like um, a freeze dryer can, can really do the job in a big way, but it's, it's gadget value rather than requirement, right? You can you you know you can buy an affordable air air dryer air dehydrator, or you can just use your oven, right? You're making jerky in your oven because you yeah, can yeah. get the, the heat down low enough kind of stuff. Um, David Evans has put a link to a knife. I'm gonna say spring assisted. You want to check that, David? Yeah, I would not buy. I, well, I can't buy a spring assisted knife up here. Yeah, just check check that you know, in the luggage. Yeah, it'll be fine. Um, I would love a spring assisted knife. Those are so cool. I had a spring assisted um, uh, um, screwdriver once, right? <laughs> which I guess is how the knives work as well. Coolest thing ever. Flick, 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 flick. <laughs> I just sit there and do that all day long. Hmm. <laughs> that was the coolest thing. Little Phillips. I want another one. Um, Bettina says, I have a big dehydrator that I got from Costco and then a small one I got from the thrift store. Man, you people and the thrift store, man, I, I go into my local thrift store all the time and I can find nothing of interest. And I, I, I can't tell you how many people I know who are like, yeah, I got this dehydrator at the thrift store. I got this axe at the thrift store. You know, I bought this, this cast iron camping design Dutch oven at the thrift store. And I'm just like, where are you guys finding these thrift stores? I've got a couple of interesting things. I got a pewter goblet that was like a dollar. And I got mm -hmm. um, you know, I found a nice merino wool blanket. Yeah. 
But Destiny uh, says needed items for car travel in winter warm sleeping bag water jug with pump pillows tracks whatever that is emergency candles with matches jackery tea protein bars dry soups kleenex flashlight so destiny is uh she's building an entire survival kit for the car i used to have one that i, I made for my wife mm -hmm. for her car uh but uh, in cleaning out the, the car she left it out in the rain so it's just like you know what that was money uh, um, I'm going to add something to that that you should have. Yeah. Destiny. Density. Um, and I carry one of these in my car, and I made City Girl carry one in her car as well. Um, yeah, a booster. I purchased it two times, apparently. Lovely. You just got to remember to charge it like every three months or so. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful little thing. It's not that big. And uh, if your car doesn't start in the winter, which is what you're talking about, yeah. because the battery is like low or dead, then this thing will do it. It's amazing. Huh. I have... Um, it's expensive. That's who I Yeah, I, I have one that's bigger than that, and it's got like a light on it and blah, blah, blah. Well, this has a light on it. Come on, Jess. <laughs> It's somewhere in there. There's a light. See, there's got the light symbol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, put that put that in there. Destiny, density. Yeah. It's nice too if you if you see somebody oh. standing by the car with the hood open. And they're standing there with booster cables and they're looking for somebody to come help. Yeah. Man, <laughs> you just whip that thing out and there. People are like, well, I actually need a boost. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, <laughs> it actually happened where I, I was you. at this I was at the subway in Tweed and uh one of the employees there her car wouldn't start and she somebody had already tried to help her with a boost that wouldn't start and I was like oh, I got something she's like oh no my 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 husband's coming from home he's going to bring a battery and I said well let's just try this <laughs> and it worked yeah the problem is like if you do it too often then your battery is kind of toast right well if you need to replace your battery then yeah david evans says i have the gb40 great need to have tool yeah this is one that i just is showed. that what he just showed you just showed <clears throat> uh patina says booster tire filler first aid kit and chargeable emergency lights are definite need i have a i have a tire pump thing tire attached filler? to the uh you know plug it in the car blow up your tires said, are you talking about the, just a pump or bo yeah. boost any? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Russell. <laughs> All right. Eddie, do you, sorry, Bettina, I know you don't like that. Bettina, is it just a pump or is it, are you talking about that spray can that seals and fills? <laughs> so you can kind of limp. limp oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. The one that, that ends that, uh, <laughs> that, that sort of sprays in the a sealant. <laughs> um, Country Boy says, I have a great booster combo, but the wife kills it charging her phone so she can play games. So if my battery dies, we're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> Just taking a look. Yeah, if oh, I yeah. ever say boost any again, either she took an answer. Hey, it's great. I love that. Tina or Destiny, either one of you can answer. <laughs> so this is what I have. Uh, mine's an older version of this, though. Uh, oh yeah, I have a, a similar. It's not. Uh, it's not the same brand. It's um, Stan Stanfield Stanley Stanley. Probably a Stanley. In fact, I've I probably like, made the same. Uh... I've had it for like twenty years, and it still works. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Hmm. Eight minutes left. So Boosten is still with us. David's still with us. Country Boy's still with us. 
There are 19 people watching us slowly descend into madness here. Um, Destiny says, Boostiny. Looks like I'm top heavy like Dolly Parton or that Russell has early dementia. Mixing words. I just don't know which of those it would be. Uh, yeah, mixing words is not a new thing for me. <laughs> early onset word mixing. All right, do either of you play video games? Because that's your new uh, that's your new handle, Boostiny. Yeah. Boostiny. <laughs> oh man, oh, that works. But you know, also has a bigger channel charger, but it stays in the house. <sighs> I have two sets of solar panels, but no power station to plug them into. Do I need a power station? Probably not. But do I want one? Yeah. Let me. Let me. Oh man, I've but, tried you know, so many times to get you one too. Uh, that's, that's fine. I mean, I'll get one at some point. But like I've been thinking about what Russell, what you said about using like a jackery or something, um, when I decide to solar up my garage. And I love that idea. Up, oh, Destiny's out. Hot tub is calling. Thanks for tonight's Thanks. live. Take care, everyone. I'd be Zoom. See you later, Destiny. Every have a have a good hot tub. Does that does that work? Have a good hot tub. Have a good hot. That doesn't. Work, I hope does it's it? nice and. I hope it's nice and cool tonight where you are, Destiny, because that's the best way to enjoy a hot tub. Yeah, that is absolutely. They, they, they. The best time ever for me was like it's got to be like minus twenty Celsius and a really strong wind. Mm -hmm. That's when you really like a hot tub. Don't love getting out of it though. Mm hmm. Yep. Ours and ours was like. At our old house, it was like a trip down the back porch, around this little walkway, and then into mm -hmm. the hub tub. Sort of like running through the snow. Right. Yeah, I'm like, gotta get. <laughs> Next yeah. week, we have to remember to call Destiny Boostiny. Boost. Have to remember. <laughs> Oh man! On a personal, uh, for the last five minutes, personally, um, a massive want for me, as you know, Russell is is a drone, the one that's just under two hundred fifty grams and, and can follow me. I I want that drone like I want air to breathe. Do I need to have drone footage in my in my YouTube's? No, I ca I cannot in any way honestly call a drone a need. Yeah. It's a massive want, but you know. That said, I mean, well, it's it's just your, I think it's just your situation right now. If you were doing bushcraft videos every week, like you had a spot to get in the bush and you had time to do it like every week. Yeah. You know, to to like you'd be the oh, same I, way I as have I am. Like, yeah. like I gotta have I gotta have three cameras in my arsenal. I have to have. It's not a, a want, it's a need. I gotta have my GoPro, I gotta have my Canon, I gotta have a drone. And, I, you know, if I if my drone died tomorrow, I'd be out there buying another one. Yeah. You know, or my Canon or my GoPro. I'm interested in the um, in the latest GoPros. Hard to justify because I've got a GoPro, though. All right. What's I just want to see, like, what... Um, like, it seems like the, the latest ones have some cool features. But, again, because I'm not out shooting a video every week and i've already got a perfectly good gopro you know it's, there's only so much money in the world by which i mean my bank account you know like you, you can't just buy everything no you can't do you happen to remember off the top of your head what the, the great new features are no i don't because i've had two two drams now um <laughs> just two yeah i still have some work to do before i go to bed tonight so what editing no for my actual work i ran out of time at the end of the day Ew. yeah I, you know what i i say just 
don't don't work. Interesting, because you just don't work. <laughs> so all yeah. I needed to do was like have a, a solar panel company and then get out of Dodge. <laughs> oh, it, my God. So many things just happen just right for me to do this. Yeah. You know, kids are older. I don't have to look after them. Had a little bit of money. Pricing on land was stupidly cheap at the time. Yeah. Had a little breathing space to try something new. A hugely supportive wife. You right. know? So many things just came together and just went, okay, Russell, do this now. Yep. And I went, okay, yeah. So I, yeah. Hey, super Shawnee. lucky. Super lucky. Yeah, it's you definitely have a have a, a cool setup there in many many ways. So Shawnee has popped in to say hi. <clears throat> How's it going, Shawnee? Shawnee is a hey, channel Shawnee. hero. Uh, Country boy is asking if I've looked at the DJI cams. Yeah, the um, the drone I want is a DJI, I believe. Susie Q is asking something you may not want to answer. Russ, why no Friday night boost fest for the past? Oh week? no, I'll I'll answer that. It's um, uh, we're on hiatus for a while. Um. We weren't. We just weren't having as much fun as we usually do, for I'm not sure what reasons, but and we had really dwindling numbers, so um, we just decided to put on hiatus. We're perfectly happy, you know, just chilling Friday nights and watching movies and stuff. So that's it. Um, oh, Countryway says they've just introduced some cool stuff. I try not to spend too much time at the DJI site because they make a lot of stuff, a lot of cool stuff that's not drones as well. Like some some really cool sort of video stuff. Uh, and the last thing I need is to go jonesing for more equipment. You know? You know, that that's an interesting thing. Like, it's, I, I've seen a lot where uh, YouTubers, content creators will say, oh, I... I gotta have there, there's always something next that they want to have in their their equipment arsenal like a new lens or a new camera or a new this or any of that yeah. and i'm perfectly happy with what i have right now lenses cameras whatever i can't think of anything i you know yeah i want to upgrade or add to i sort of have this thing like if i won like 30 mil tomorrow what would i well i'd have a second canon 90d i thought you were going me no, like oh, I can't duplicate myself. Um, and I'd have the drone, but like I, you know, some people would swap out a Canon ninety D for like a Black Magic or it's something eight K or whatever. No, no, I, I'm perfectly happy with this camera. I just want a second one so I can just leave this one here and have the second one ready to go into the woods because there's a lot of rigmarole involved in putting this one in and taking it out. <clears throat> and I almost broke the um, the screen off it last time, so I was like, hmm. "I'm not Casey Neistat. I can't break a 90D every week and just buy another one." You know? <laughs> Nobody's Casey Neistat. You know what? Actually, you know what I would buy if I had the money. Uh, you can buy like 360 cameras for drones now. Those yeah, are, that's true. Clamps on the drone on top and on bottom, and I guess you have to turn off the sensors or whatever. But uh, and then you get 360 video. Yeah. And I, I just think that's me. Okay. And I, I, I've seen the video. It's cool for, for everybody watching who doesn't doesn't know what this is. Like you watch the video and then like if you're watching on a regular computer, you can just scroll around with your mic, mouse yeah, and look wherever so, you want to look yeah. as the drone's flying along. Like, Which is cool. cool. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's not it's not like something I would identify as a need, but it is something that it, it would be pretty cool to have. You know, if I had the drone to put it on. I uh, tried to get your drone too. It's okay. <laughs> These stupid brands, you know, I tell them, hey, look, you'll get a video. Here's the address. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I, it must be that stupid Quebec address that you have. Probably has to do with the fact that it doesn't say Russell on the, on the, uh, uh, Shawnee says, I fell asleep earlier. Whoops. Well, thanks for making me feel good about my content there, Shawnee. What? <laughs> oh, hey, it's 11 o'clock. It's after 11 o'clock. Okay. So, uh, since I got to 
go and get some work done before I go to bed. We're going to shut this baby down. Um, don't do it. Just don't do it. Uh, I, I got to do it. I have a house to pay for. Um, <clears throat> so thanks to all who hung out with me. Thanks to Russell for uh, helping keep the, the second half uh, going with many more examples than I had in my head. Um, oh, is that what I did? <laughs> if I'm throwing you flowers, just take the flowers. Um, wait, we don't say that in English, do we? <laughs> it's like when you, when, a, you sold, when you made the sale, stop selling. <laughs> is that it? Is that what the English I mean, version is? Well, no, that's completely different, but I'm, I'm just saying it's okay. one of those things, right? Yeah. Um, so everybody, please, between now and next week, uh, stay healthy, stay sane, stay safe, and be kind to one another. And don't forget, Bettina likes to be called Betty. Peace, soup. <laughs>